here we're going to have an exercise. At this point, you've gone through doing, doing code with me. I'm going to walk you a little bit through the JSON example. Um, and so if you go into that examples re uh, repository I linked, which is here, little zero rust examples. And if you go into, you clone this, right, in, in, your, uh, in your standard way of cloning, clone this. And if you go into the JSON directory, so this has a bunch of examples, and we're going to be going through the JSON examples. So navigate in your IDE or terminal, wherever you want to, navigate into the JSON directory, um, and we are going to be modifying this code. I'm going to be walking you through how this code works, and then we have a problem that you can do on your own to modify this code. Um, and so let me get back to the presentation. Right, navigate into that directory, the JSON directory, and confirm that your example works. Uh, once you're in that directory, cargo run dash r. Um, and as everyone gets set up with this, um, I'm going to go look at the code and explain what it's doing so that you're going to be able to modify it. So let me close the code I made. Get, uh, let me quickly commit what I did so I don't somehow manage to delete it. Uh, hack. Cool. Um, and let me step over into the JSON examples. Right, so just as with uh, the code we were working, I walked you through with the password checker. We have both guest code and methods guest, and methods, oops, methods guest, I did not go to the right place. Methods guest source search JSON. So what this code is doing is um, it is going to use uh, a JSON library, an external JSON library. It's going to receive a string that's JSON data. Um, it is going to hash the string and ultimately uh, commit that hash. We'll get to that in a moment. It's going to hash that string and commit it. Um, it's also going to parse the string, that's the JSON string, parse it as a JSON as JSON data, and it's going to use this JSON library. It's going to look in the field critical data. It's going to interpret that field as a U32, um, and it's going to put that data into uh, into the receipt. Right? These these two things, the data and the hash, are the outputs, and I'm going to jointly commit those into the receipt. This is the pattern I mentioned earlier about multiple outputs. I'll come back to that because what's the point of this program? Well, this is a proof that the JSON file that has this hash contains a field named critical data and it proves what the value of that critical data field is without actually revealing the entire JSON file. So you can, this gives us a way to have this sort of partial access, provable partial access to a JSON file. We're not sharing everything about it, but you can nevertheless convince someone this JSON file that has this hash, it really does contain this particular field with this particular value. Um, coming back, since I sort of skipped over it a little, there's this outputs structure. So there's actually a third file of relevance here. It's just in JSON core. Um, and there's just a structure that holds multiple outputs, so it's easier to, uh, it's a better, more ergonomic to handle them on both the host and guest side. Um, and we use our deserialization um, library. It has uh, deserialized and serialized traits that we implement for this, and that's going to let the guest or the host and guest code um, translate this U32 and this digest into the U32 words that's necessary to do the transfer. Um, and then over on the host side, that's here in host source main, over on the host side, we are opening the JSON file. There's a JSON file in the resources directory. I guess I will point to that as well. Here we have just root res directory. There's an example JSON file. Here's the example JSON file. Um, and it's going to uh, read this JSON file into a string. This is from, whoops, I guess not this file. Oh, this is just a file. It's going to read it into a string. And that string, we're going to hand over to the prover in the same way we did in the last example. Um, we run the prover. We verify 
that the receipt was correct. Um, and then we read the we read the journal out of the receipt. And then we deserialize the journal into this outputs object that we were just looking at over, over in the core directory, this outputs object. And then um, we print we print the contents of the output, the outputs.hash and outputs.data came from this outputs directory and we print a nice string. So if we uh, CD, uh, what is this? CD, zero rest example, CD JSON. I'm going to the directory I told you to go to. If, if you cargo run dash R, as I had mentioned earlier, um, we should get a nice pretty printed output saying that, hey, here's the hash and it contains the field critical data. Oh, and the value is 47. We've proven that that field is 47. Um, questions on understanding this JSON code before I ask you to modify it or questions in general. Okay, so let me talk about your the problem I'm posing to you. So we're gonna take, we're a little short on time, we're gonna take maybe eight minutes. Um, and I want you to modify the JSON example to instead compare two JSON files, confirm that they share the same critical data value, but don't reveal what that value is. So. Um, a question popped up, which was, we'll we be covering verification of the proof by a third party. Um, so I don't know that we're going to specifically talk about it, but what's notable is that the examples at the end of the host code we call verify. And so the only difference, if it was a third party, uh, which, by the way, some of the examples, like the password checking example, have separate CLIs that generate a proof and verify the proof, for example, um, is that what you would do is you would take the a receipt that was generated, you would serialize it, send it to the third party, and then the third party would deserialize that receipt and call the same um, uh, verify uh, on the receipt uh, that we're calling here. Um, so, so, so what it looks like for someone else to verify it is mostly just calling the verifier um, at, on the receipt, which we sort of show in the same program in, in the real world, you'd send it somewhere else. Um, what's notable, by the way, is the verifier is fairly small. Um, and in the, for example, new RC release, um, the verifier is, uh, we can actually compile to WASM. Um, people have been running the verifier, for example, on near uh, as an example. Um, so uh, yes. Uh, so the other question was, um, do proofs depend on the risk zero VM version? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, we actually uh, are, working on sort of improving our versioning story. Um, so the, the um, long-term, there will probably be, the, the proofs will be specific to the version, which at some point we would like to sort of have the proofs themselves have a semantic versioning and to sort of make sure that they last for a long time. Uh, currently it's pretty active development. Uh, uh, and then also, so eventually you'll have the version of the proof system then you will have the specific risk five circuit you are running because um, the currently we only have one risk five circuit which includes two two accelerators but at some point we will probably allow people to have custom accelerators so you might have like the 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 the, the stock risk five circuit or the risk five circuit with the elliptic curve accelerator which will be a different circuit um, if you're using a lot of elliptic curves or the risk five circuit with, you know, some custom accelerator. Um, and then there'll be the actual method you're running, the specific code you're running. Um, so, so eventually a proof will depend on all of those, um, things and we'll hopefully provide a more specific versioning story for it. Next question, which is a very good question is, is there a solidity implementation of the verifier? Um, and the answer is currently no. Um, uh, and actually, it says also you mentioned the WASM verifier. Can the same be done for proof generation? So currently, proof generation is is fairly computationally expensive, um, and uh, generally you would not imagine running the proof generation on chain. You would simply do the proof verification on chain. Um, so uh, so like I mentioned, we do work for on WASM, and you can run that on chain. Solidity verifier. We do not currently have a solidity verifier yet. One of the big issues is the proof size is fairly large. And so 
in order to reduce gas costs. I think that our current plan is rather than to directly verify the proof on say Ethereum, um, we would actually wrap the verification of the proof in a proof system that has like a, like a, a, a snark based proof system that has a smaller proof size and then do the verification of that on uh, Ethereum. But we will be d describing more sort of our process to roll this out so that you can verify proofs on a wide range of chains um, sort of when we get closer to the launch of the, the proof network we're working on. Um, and uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, it says, could you uh, please switch another time to the slides for the task description? Oh yeah, could you go back to that? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good, uh, good question. <laughs> yes. um, and then the, another question is, if proof depends on the VM version, does that mean the verifier needs to run the VM to verify the proofs? Uh, so no, um, the verifier never runs the VM. Um, but the verifier does, the VM consists of a bunch of time steps. And each time step uh, implements a set of these polynomial constraints. Um, and that, uh, that core polynomial constraint set is checked inside the verifier. So there's a, there's a, a sort of, um, uh, so, so in, that, in, in, in that sense, the verifier depends on the circuit, but it doesn't actually execute the circuit. It simply uses the constraint set that the circuit has to do some additional math. I think we cover very, very vaguely how the proof system works under the hood, but it's actually quite a long detailed topic of, com of discussion. And we have a sort of a bunch of materials on our website that go into that at a more deep level as well. Okay, I am going to say that's time so that I have enough time to explain what's going on. Um, my cursor is weird. There we go. Um, so, right, what needs to happen? So, if we're going to be comparing two exam two JSON files, we need to send two JSON files to um, over to the guest. So, I'm just going to copy the file reading code. Um, I'm not actually going to read a different file since we're trying to prove they have the same value. Um, which will be uh, a little boring as a thing to be proven, but you know, there's there's no reason I can't do that. So I'm just going to uh, give new names to these because I think I need to at least some of them I need to interact with more than once. Um, so we're going to read a second file. We're going to add that as a second input. Data two. Um, then, okay, I'm going to come back to the rest of the host code later once I finish the guest. Over on the guest side, now we're thinking, I'm just sort of thinking in the order stuff goes in where first you read the files in the host, then you run the guest code, then you process what the guest code did. So over on this side, we're going to have to read twice. Data one, data two. Um, we're going to have to digest the SHA twice. Um, hash, hash two. Uh, to, we don't want to output the data at any point, um, but we do need both both datas. And then if uh, data does not equal data two, panic. Oh, don't you want to read the actual value? You don't want to just compare oh, that to oh, the oh, 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 you were right. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, and I believe, what was the value I was reading? Critical data, right, OK. All of this. Back. Yeah, we're not proving the JSON files are equal. We're proving the specific field is equal. Thank you for that correction. I would have had the wrong answer. I'm sure many people in this call can relate to not doing it quite right. To, I think you also need to unwrap them both. Otherwise, they could both be empty. Mm, you are correct. Thank you. I had, I had done this ahead of time and then failed to commit my result. If you saw me looking in um, the Git history briefly while 
the example was going on. I was like, wait, where's where's the commit? Oh, it doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> so, right. I, I had the answer key. And then I didn't lose it. Hash and hash two are going to be our two outputs. So we, I modified the output structure um, because we're sending two hashes instead of sending some of the data. Um, right, we're sending two hashes. And um, then all that needs to happen still is back on the host side, which is over here. Um, and we're going to, uh, at this point, we actually do have the receipt that's correct, but we're not going to be outputting the right pretty printed data. The JSON files with these hashes share critical data value. Uh, that's not the best English sentence, but that's okay. Um, I'll put hash and hash too. And now we'll see if Cargo thinks I got it right as well, or if I made mistakes. Oh dear. Okay. What did I do wrong? Oh. Um, over in the guest code, I'm not using the JSON library correctly. Expecting string found JSON value. Oh, uh, no, that's okay. Data two. Actually, you forgot data two. Uh -huh. uh, data two equals parts of data two. And yep. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, this is actually interesting to note that um, one of the interesting things is that this makes it much easier to write zero knowledge proofs. But bugs in your guest code mean that you might not be proving the thing you thing you think you are. So much like smart contracts. Uh, the guest code in particular is important to audit very carefully uh, because, uh, you know, certainly um, if the security bugs that can exist because there are unexpected code paths in the uh, guest code are certainly non non zero. Although luckily it's a lot easier to audit than say an arithmetic circuit um, because you know you can actually read Rust code fairly straightforwardly. And so there you go. And I will be posting this solution uh, publicly as well um, if people want to check against it or check your work.